Now, the essential difference between the previous chapter, the Vibhuti Yoga, and the Vishwarup Darshan Yoga is that in that chapter, in chapter 10, we had talked about or read about how Brahman pervades everything in the world. Okay. In the Vishwarup Darshan Yoga, we will see how everything in the world is in Brahman. So, uh, you know, it was one to many and now it's many to one. That is what is the essential difference between the two chapters. Now, Vishwarup Darshan Yoga has 55 verses and basically it is presenting Brahman synthetically. That means everything is in uh, Brahman as opposed to the analytical representation of the previous chapter. So the 50, the breakup broadly of the 55 verses is from verses 1 to 12. Arjun is requesting Krishna to show his cosmic form. And uh, verses 13 to 25, Krishna, uh, Arjun, sorry, describes that cosmic, uh, cosmic form. You know how the entire creation is in the body of the God of gods with unlimited arms, faces, stomachs. It has no beginning and no end and extends in all directions immeasurably. I mean, there's no end to it. And the radiance is similar to a thousand suns blazing together in the sky. So this chapter has also become very popular thanks to the recent movie Oppenheimer. Uh, so Oppenheimer, the father of the nuclear bomb, was atomic bomb, sorry, was actually very, uh, had studied the Bhagavad Gita in Sanskrit. So, you know, so anyway, that's just an aside. Now, 26 to 34, uh, we are explained the all-consuming destructive expression of that supreme being. And verses 35 to 45, Arjun is overwhelmed. And he surrenders to the cosmic form. And 46 to 51, Arjun requests the Lord to show his gentle form because he's just it's just too much for him. And uh, 52, towards the end of the chapter, uh, Krishna explains how to reach that supreme being. So with that, let us start chapter 11, verse number 1. Arjuna Vachaha Madanugrahaya Paramam Goyam Madhyatma Sangitam Yatva Yuktam Vachastina so the Arjun said, out of compassion for me, the supreme secret known as Adhyatma, of which you have spoken, this delusion of mine is dispelled. So this is what the verse is saying. Let's take this up word by word. Arjun Vaj, Arjun said, Madanu Grahaya, out of compassion for me, Karmam, supreme, Guyam, secret. Uh, right? So you remember that chapter 9, Raja Vidya, Raja Guya Yoga. So Guyam is secret, Adhyatma is uh, 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 the no Adhyatma, knowledge of the self known as Sangitam is known as. So, Adhyatma Sangitam becomes known as Adhyatma or knowledge of the self. Yat which Tvaya by you Uktam spoken Vach is word Tain by that Mo Mo is uh, here it means delusion. We take it as attraction but actually it's delusion when you're deluded by something. So, mo means delusion. I am this, vigataha is dispelled, mam, my. Right? So, the verse translates to, Arjun said, out of compassion for me, the supreme secret known as Adhyatma of which you have spoken, this delusion of mine is dispelled. Let's chant together. Arjun uvachaha Madanu Paramam Goyam Madhyatma Sangitam 
So Arjun starts the chapter by acknowledging Krishna's explanation of Paramam Guyam or the royal secret of Adhyatma. Now, I'm just trying to build a link from the previous set of chapters. See, the word Adhyatma, does anyone remember when we used it last? Or not we, when Bhagavad Gita, it was mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita last. And then we went on from that. Chapter 9 beginning, chapter 8 and uh, Chapter, actually it uh, came in, uh, it was mentioned in the last few verses of chapter 7 which was the Gyan Vigyan Yoga. Okay. So chapter 7 verse 29 said that those who are striving for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me. Realizing the Brahman, which is the whole, Adhyatma, the individual self, because it is through Adhyatma that you will reach Brahman. It's through our inner self that we will reach that Brahman. And all actions. This is what Krishna had said towards the end of... Uh, Chapter 7, which was the Gyan Vigyan Yoga. So what this implied was that when we perform physical and mental actions, so the karma, mindful of God and dedicating everything to God, and we start meditating, we start to know our inner self. We start our spiritual journey. journey and then with that, as we refine that journey or go further on the journey, we start getting glimpses of that whole, the Brahman. And once we start seeing that Brahman, all fear that we have of, you know, whatever ill befalling us, it all goes. So the biggest uh, fear, actually, if you analyze your thoughts, is of old age and death. So that starts going. So the fear is gone. And then, so this was towards the end of chapter nine. Uh, so, sorry, chapter seven. Chapter eight, which was Akshar Brahm Yoga. Uh, Krishna had started, uh, Arjun asked that question, that what is Brahman, that whole, what is Adhyatma, the self, and what is karma? So to that, the rest of the chapters, you know, chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10 have been uh, actually going on to that fundamental question that Arjun had asked. And in chapter 8, Krishna had talked about the Brahman in the world and how we gain what we pursue. And how we can aim to reach Brahman through steadfast yoga and meditation. And we had covered the path of return and no return in that chapter. In chapter 9, Krishna continued uh, giving the greatest secret. The name of the chapter was that, Raja Vidya and Raja Goya Yoga. So he gave continues giving the greatest knowledge, how the self pervades the world. And the ignorant disregard the self and the wise actually seek it. And dedicated self-effort reaches to self-realization. And to, in this chapter, uh, okay, in chapter 10, then this thing continues till chapter 10. And in verse number 17, Arjuna asks that, how may I know you? Whatever you are talking, that you think of me like this. And so how am I supposed to know you? In what all aspects are you to be thought of by me? And then Krishna had gone on to explain his vibhuti. Now, uh, in this particular verse, Arjuna says, acknowledges his confusion that he had when he had asked the question at the beginning of the chapter 8. And he says that now my confusion on adhyatma is dispelled. The spiritual knowledge or the knowledge of the self is dispelled. Or Arjun has understood Lord's Parmam Vach, that is what he's saying here, the supreme word. And this was the, uh, these two words, Parmam Vach was also used in verse number one of chapter 10, when Krishna had said, now you listen to my supreme word, or Parmam Vach. So Arjun says that now all this is, I understand this. Now, when we are talking of Arjun, actually Arjun is almost representing us. We are also deluded. We are not very clear that what the knowledge of the self is. And we also doubt and are deluded very often. So we can identify with Arjun. Now, interestingly, if you say, see, the first word is 
so that means out of compassion so arjun is saying that out of compassion for me you have given me this knowledge now th that's an interesting uh, you know structure arjun is acknowledging the com uh, compassion that krishna feels towards him and this is actually representative or referring to the affection and compassion that a guru feels for his disciple and the seed of compassion that arose for arjun in krishna is because of arjun's faith in lord krishna i mean that's why he gave this supreme knowledge to arjun and we are fortunate to be reading it so similarly those of us who have faith can hope to have the same revelation as arjun had by the grace of the lord let's move on to verse number 2 bhava paya yo hi bhutanam shruto vestar shomaya vat kamal pa patraksah mahatmayam api chavayam so the verse translates to indeed the origin and dissolution of beings have been heard my mean detail from you o lotus eyed and also your inexhaustible greatness okay so let's take this up word word by word so the first word bhavapya yo bhav is origin apaya yo is dissolution so bhavapya yo becomes origin and dissolution so creation and dis uh, dissolution he indeed bhuta naam is of beings shruto so of the two being heard or, or shrut uh, shruti is hearing right shruto is the uh, you know in sanskrit you have ek vachan dui vachan and bahu vachan right so shruto is for the two so i have heard of the origin and dissolution vistarsha is in detail maya by me twata from you कमल पत्राक्ष सो दिस इज कमल के चक्षु वाला सो ओ लोटस आइड महात्मयम ग्रेटनेस अपी ऑल्सो च एंड अवयम इज म्यूटेबल इन एग्जॉस्टेबल सो द वर्स ट्रांसलेट्स टू इन डीड द ओरिजिन एंड डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ बींग्स हैव बीन हर्ड बाय मी इन डिटेल फ्रॉम यू ओ लोटस आइड and also your inexhaustible greatness so let's chant it together bhava paya yo hi bhutanam shruto vestar shoshmaya vattava kamalvatra so see the the even the student has to you know uh, invoke the guru so Arjun continues his appreciation of Krishna's glories and he says that I've heard from you about your imperishable majestic glories how the beings emerge from you and they go back to you so this you may recollect we had done in i think chapter 8 the akshar brahm yoga and the, the where we had talked about the cycles of creation and dissolution so these cycles have been there since times immemorial you are the source of appearance and disappearance of the entire creation and the cycle of creation and dissolution goes on endlessly yet you as brahman are avayam or immutable changeless inexhaustible so it's not that when world creation takes place your glory is reduced or when 
the creation is dissolved into you, your glory increases, your glory remains the same. And the cycles of creation and dissolution keep on happening. You are not changed. It's just, you know, how we can uh, identify is just when you have a light or a flame or a candle. You can light many other uh, candles with it. The flame of the candle is not reduced. Similarly, another example is that when someone has knowledge, by giving it to another person, the knowledge of the person who had it in the beginning is not reduced in any which ways. So by sharing it, the knowledge is not decreased. So similarly, the infinite stature of the Brahman remains even after the endless cycles of creation and dissolution. Now, Arjun addresses in this verse Krishna as Kamal Patraksha or the lotus eyed. So basically, he is referring to the beautiful eyes of Lord Krishna, which resemble the lotus flower. And see, we just had Janmashmi uh, this week, so where we talked about the various uh, uh, forms of Lord. I mean, you would have attended a lot of functions where we were talking about the charismatic personality of Krishna and how he should be motivating us. So, you know, you talk about his personality. So by uh, using this word, Arjun is actually talking about the magnetic personality of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna possessed not only the supreme knowledge, he also had a great magnetic persona. So that is verse number two. Let's move on to verse number three. Eva metya thatya tvam Atmanam parmeshwara Drashtu me chami te rupam Eshwaram purushottama O Parmeshwar it is just as you have declared yourself to be. I desire to see your supreme form, O Purushottam. So this is what the verse translates to. Let's take this up word by word. Evam, thus, etat, this, yatha, as, atthat is declared, tvam, you, atmanam, yourself, parmeshwar. Supreme Lord, drishtum, to see, ichhami, desire, I desire, I is implied, te your rupam, form, eshwaram is the glory or the splendor, divine splendor, purushottam is the best amongst the men, so the, the best of the men or supreme being. So, O Parmeshwar, it is just as you have declared yourself to be. I desire to see your supreme form, O Purushottam. So, let's chant it together. Evam metatya thatya tvam Atmanam parmeshwar Dreshtum me chami te rupam Eshwaram purushottam. So, in uh, the Vibhuti Yoga chapter, chapter 10, Krishna on Arjun's request, Arjun only had asked that how, in what all ways am I supposed to be thinking of you? So, he had given the analytical representation. Um, had given analytically his vibhutis or opulence in the previous chapter. Now, Arjun is not satisfied with just the analytical presentation. And, you know, when Krishna is saying that amongst the Sam, uh, among the Vedas, I'm the Sam Ved, amongst the cows, I'm this, amongst this category, I'm this. So he wants to see all that. Arjun is actually requesting. Arjun uh, to Krishna that he, I want to see that divine form of yours that you have just described. You say that all those vibhutis, the entire chapter uh, 10, which is just a fragment, by the way, of uh, the Lord's personality, he's all of that. So he, Arjun says that 
it's fine i understand all that all that i believe what you say is also correct now arjun is an extrovert he is like a science student you know the theory is not sufficient just the way in a science class we always had the theory uh, theory classes and we had the practicals right so now arjun says that i have to practically see i want to see the results how i want to see how just the way you know we used to see the results of all the theories that we had studied in the experiment form it's like saying that okay cyanide effects of cyanide i want to see what happens when someone eats it you know as you say even just a bit of it will make you die so arjun says that okay i mean the point is that i want to see that vibhuti you say all those things are in you uh, i mean i want to see that so arjun is requesting actually for the lord to present his glory synthetically in one form and to praise lord krishna he, the words that he is using are parmeshwar or the supreme lord and purushottam the supreme amongst men or the best of men or the highest being creation um, amongst the beings that are created and the choice of the words is also suggesting that where we are going we are looking for arjun is uh, looking for that synthetic form or the cosmic form of krishna where or the brahman right so that is what where we are headed let's move on to verse number 4 manya se yadi tachkayam maya adreshtu meti prabhu योगेश्वर तो मे तम दर्शयात्म सो इंटरेस्टिंग लीज इज इफ यू थिंक इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर मी टू सी ओ लॉर्ड देन ओ योगेश्वर प्लीज शो मी योर इम्पेरिशेबल सेल्फ लेट्स टेक दिस वर्ड बाय वर्ड मन्य से think implied is you so manya say here means you think yadi if tat that shakayam is possible maya by me drishtam to see iti das prabhu o lord yogeshwar is uh, you know the lord of uh, the uh, yogi of the the lord of the yogi is actually yogeshwar tath te then me me or to me from you darshaya show atmanam self yourself avayam which is imperishable immutable so if you think it is possible for me to see o lord then o yogeshwar please show me your imperishable self so let's chant it together मन्य से यदि तच्छकवय मया दृष्टो now see this verse is continuing from the previous verse and he says if you think it is possible possible means safe that same example cyanide example that if you think it will uh, you know cause me no harm so if you think it is possible for me to see then please show me your imperishable form now so that is one so arjun knows that you he, he 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 actually doesn't know what he is in for so it could be something uh, very very macrocosmic so what he is implying here is that when i see that macrocosmic form revealed to me firstly will i be able to see it what it means is that because of the shock of what i'm going to see will i be able to maintain my balance the same cyanide example i hope i don't die that is so will i be will all my mental faculties still be with me 
basically is taking telling the lord that you take the responsibility if you think it's possible for me to see so you take the responsibility you know just as when you go in for to the operation uh, some uh, close dear one is undergoing an operation the first thing that the surgeon does is make you sign a whole lot of documents which indemnifies him so all the responsibility is the patient and the patient's relatives in case the some mishap happens and the surgery goes wrong so similarly arjun is now saying you please indemnify me if you think it's possible then you know then please show me your cosmic form that synthetic form and uh, so please take guarantee of no harm coming to me so uh, arjun refers to krishna as yogeshwar or the lord of yogis see in the previous chapter he had called him yogin uh, if you uh, recollect in, in the chapter 10 vibhuti yogi he said o yogin the person who's mastered the yoga uh, art of yoga so uh, you, uh, now he is calling him yogeshwar yoga is union with the self and yogi is one who has mastered the art of yoga but out of increased respect for krishna arjun is now referring to him as the ishwar or the lord of the yogis and so he is saying that if it is safe for me and i can take your cosmic form please show it to me so with that we'll close today's session